Namaste. Welcome. One of the most important goals while you practice the Hatha yoga elements of uh, uh, asanas or yoga poses and movements, as well as the breathing works, especially the cleansing ones and the energy producing methods, is for us to uh, not only strengthen and build structural integrity, but to uh, open the inner pathways of our energy uh, in preparation for the energy to flow. So most of this are energy producing methods, especially the first year of the practice. So we don't want to be forcing our body to practice, for example, uh, deep asanas or complex asanas, which requires to go uh, far and beyond the average range of motion physical body. Otherwise, if we are not prepared, we have to handle not just the physical pressure, but of course, um, the regulation, the control of the breath, all right, there's a huge possibility of putting the pressure inside our vital organs. So for today, I will be sharing with you a simple, this is my favorite actually, I still practice this element up to this very day, and this comprises most of my warming up process. Yeah, if I want to go and deep, uh, tackle some deeper aspects of the practice later on, but it's a good practice on its own already. So for today's practice, we will be combining just four elements and uh, we will be practicing them one after the other in a flowing uh, sequence. Uh, so the following are Ardhra Chandrasana or the seated binding twist, the Kurmasana or the position of the tortoise and turtle, the breast of fire, the couple of body breath and we will be flowing all these elements through the active transitions of jumping back and jumping forward. Yeah, right. So if you're not jumping through, you're not jumping back, um, you might um, just sit through um, the elements, or if you're still working on those active ones, you might utilize the block or anything you can find at home to create that space under your body. All right. So um, as we practice, I will be dropping some energetic significance and principles as well uh, for this element. So it becomes like a lecture, practice, and um, a learning session as well. Alright, so let's start in the downward facing dog. <clears throat> no, I'm going to just start with the downward facing dog. Alright, just cycle the legs side to side the hips. Alright, sit the hips slow, inhale the neck gently forward, and exhale, stretch back. Alright, let's do a couple more. Eh? Just to initiate the opening of the body, inhale and exhale, stretch back the dog. Last time, breathing in and exhale. Alright, just cross the right knee through to the tops of the mat to the pigeon position. Alright, and then from there, and we just open the upper spine by lifting the breath up, inhale to open, folding the elbows to the sides and exhale. Right, breathe in, so draw it from that left hip to the side of the trunk and up to the tops of the neck. Fold the elbows to the sides and exhale. One more, inhale, open and exhale. All right, shift your weight to your right. All right, just reset the legs in front. You might give them nice resetting. You can rub your hands up against the skin of your legs and soften the tight spots. All right, and from here, the left leg falls under. Let's do um, the easy Ardhamachan Rasana, so on um, the elbows supporting in front and then just twist the body to the right hand side. Right, next up, in the Ardhamachan Rasana, actually, you don't want to be bouncing the chest forward. Rather, um, although you are lifting the spine up to the vertical, all right, you want to fold yeah, the inner body, so like you're twisting inside your own body. Energetically, what happens here as you inhale, inspire the breath, it goes down to uh, between the second or the third and the fourth chakra, and then you're drawing your own energy up, the sensation rising up. I've talked about this many times, and those two forces of energy meet here. And then when you hold the position, somehow you keep that energy growing, that space between the um, um, belly button, and just a little bit higher than um, the big ribs so around the core area. Energetically, it's between the third and the fourth chakras of the spine. And you're holding about five breaths. Just control the breath here so you don't be dumping the weight down. So, like you want to filter the exit of the breath so you keep the sensation all the way inside. All right, cross. All right, slide back again to your double facing loop. All right, and cycle the legs here. 
All right, bend your hips, inhale, then it forward a bit. Exhale, stretch back. Breathing in, breathing out. One more, inhalation, exhalation. All right, next, the lift knee through the sit position. All right, so the right hip is open now behind us. All right, open the collarbones apart, and then draw the breath all the way to the tops of the throat. Just inhalation and exhale forward. All right, lighten your back hip a bit. Move the hips around. Exhale and fold. One more. Inhale, open. And exhale. All right, release the body. All right, side to side the hips. All right, this time the right leg is under, the left leg is on top. All right, easy first, like a preparatory sequence. Again, as we inhale, allow the energy to enter the body through the nostrils and then draw your own energy out. The prana from the outside, the apana from the inside, and you allow them to blend here, if I may, around this point. So you have to tap that space under. Or as it twist, spiral, you don't bounce it forward, neither you round it. It's like a spiraling action. And exhale as it twist. Staying about three more breaths. Breathing in, you may loosen a bit. And exhale. Right. We turn the heat to a bit of a side to side, just to free the neck out of the fuse and tuck spots of the collarbones in front. Right. And cross the arms, release the legs, and then push up again to your downward dog. And side to side the hips. Right. Staying. All right, and then from here we practice one round of breath so far. This is maybe a second to neck. Inhale, exhale. All right, let me just adjust. Inhale, soften. All right, crossing the legs, activate to the front. All right. If you're not jumping, this is your modification, hover, and then set, or you can start to take your legs through between your arms, and then like I said, oh, you may use the book. And then from there, all right, we're going to open the legs apart, all right. preparation for the Kurmasana, Upavishta Kurmasana, Kurmasana first, and go, breathe out the spine, exhale, now, coil inward, draw up, and you fold easy down, all right? Or you might want to try to pull Upavishta Konasana with the chest down the earth. Most of these are preparatory, or the easy alternative for the pull positions later on. All right, from here, we press up. You know how to do this. Exhale, all right, release the legs, back to our downward facing dog position, cycle the legs. All right, breathing in, lightly gaze forward, exhale back, inhale, shift back and open the neck. Exhale, one last, inhalation, exhalation, all right, breath so far. Clip, exhale out, all right, inhale, bend the knees, all right, jumping to cross leg position, the top of that inhalation, if you see, or as you breathe, or halfway through it, inhale, hover, all right, bend the legs through, between the arms, and then set, all right, now bend your right leg, or the left leg under, the right leg is on top, all right, now, Let's do the full Ajahn Machin Brasana. Breathe up, hang and suspend. To the top of that inhalation, initial bind, readjust, exhale, fold this in, draw it up. All right. And the reaching hold of the foot. Remember, you don't bounce it forward. Inhale, draw in and up. Exhale, twist around. Right. 
So the sensation here, yeah, really deep and hollow, right through the space between the two big ribs, and the back is wide, and your spine is lifting up, but you don't feel rigid inside. It's really twisting inside the hole, inside the body. Yeah, the big ribs are rubbing in, the fronts of the upper back open. You have to be careful with this one since it's a deep twist. You don't want to be bouncing the release. Normally after this twist, I experience this surge of energy. Sometimes I need to slow things down, otherwise I feel a bit trembling or shaking. It's really a powerful and potent way to trap and confine that energy inside the body. Really an energy producing method. All right, to release, inhale, collect a bit. All right, exhale, release. All right, across the legs. Now we're gonna do the active jumping back. All right, one knee on top. If you're not jumping back, just step back behind you. All right, exhale, breathing in. Lift, back. All right, push up. Now we're facing up. And then side to side the hips. All right, press the fire, one round. First air out, you may want to loosen that. You may repeat the cross leg jump through or the straight legs one already. Exhale, prepare an inhale. Root the set. Alright. From there, after the Ardhrama Chandras on the right side, you open the legs apart for the Kurmasana. So we will be practicing Kurmasana twice. Yeah. Right. Breathing in. Exhale. All right, the Kormasana, let me know angle so you can see. All right, so the energetic significance of the Kormasana is that, all right, you are using the core of the body, right, like you are sending the breath here, right? Inhale, coil everything in and up, all right? And then you're gonna send the buoyancy to the backs of the body, so the back forms a wide dome, and you lift them up like the balloon. So the effect is, all right, what happens? Yeah. Inhale. Top of the inhalation. Yeah, slide your arms down. Exhale. Ex inhale. Yeah. The legs, the hips, and the shoulders will lift off the ground. So, um, like you can yeah, see it through under the body here. All right, if you can't lift your body first yet, you can just keep the body down, but eventually in the future, you will be lifting the whole of your structure up. Don't fight the legs. All right, breathing in. Exhale. All right, release the arms. Come back up. All right, cross the legs again. One leg on top of the other. Loosen. Exhale, breathing in, jump back, all right, if you feel that your spine feels a bit uh, tight, you can release the body, and then do a gentle upward dog, exhale to the downward facing dog, all right, stay, all right, press up far. in, cross legs, or straight leg jump through. Alright, coming through now. Ardhra Chandrasana again, this time. It's the right leg on under, left leg on top. Right. Exhale, right. breathing in. Inhale, coil in and up, like a spiral at the top of that inhalation. Bind, exhale, hollow, but throw up. All right, let me 
I'll get my shirt off so you can see at least the external manifestation of how to confine the energy. All right. Inhale. So before you bind, there's a light kumbaka. Exhale. Draw in. Inhale. So they meet here. This is where you grow the energy. And then just filter the exhalation so you don't collapse it. Like only the old stale breath exits the body. You may narrow the pathway of the throat. Let the lips or the tongue lightly suspend inside the mouth, the lips slightly close. Alright, breathing in, a left clip, release the bind, exhale, alright, jump it back. Press one leg on top of the other, exhale, hollow, breathe and press. Exhale back, alright, push off the down dog, or you may flow to your upper dog, downward dog sequence. Now, breath apart. through at the top of that inhalation or halfway through it or as you breathe through the motion. Alright, the set position. Alright, Karmanasana. Second round. Uh -huh. Breathing in, coil in and up. Exhale, prepare, inhale. So the buoyancy goes to the backs of the body and then you might find some more lightness and space here. Elevate the hips. You can elevate the whole body actually. Control the exhalation so you don't lose the lightness. You're holding about three five breaths here. All right, inhale. Exhale, release the body down. Inhale, push away. Exhaling. All right, bend the knees. Inhale. Last round. Cross legs. Exhale, hollow. Breathe up and press. All right. Flow up. And exhale. To downward flexing dog. Yes. That's a sequence. Short. But powerful. Alright, let's do one more round of breaths. Five. Alright, exhale fully. Yeah. Last round of the sit through. Inhale. Wet the sit. Alright, exhale. Breathe up. And exhale, just hold forward. Now let me just adjust. Breathe it forward and up. And exhale. All right. But so that's uh, basically the concept of um, the program. Um, this one round, uh, I would normally do about two rounds of that sequence. Then after that, I will tackle deeper elements of um, flexion, normally back bends, then deep hip openers, deep twists, then yeah. Um, after that, if you have the time, you might practice your stillness or your meditation, either through on the Nadi Shodhana with retention, but normally, would treat that separately, the Nadi Shodhana. So after this, what I do is I'll just lie down and I'll just um, practice maybe a 30 minute of Shavasana. 
if there's a time I will progress it to some deeper absorption but yeah um, otherwise it's a good practice on its own already yeah it's very energy producing really meditative as well since you have to really be focusing on the elements and not get distracted um, the energy is flowing intensely inside so you can actually feel it uh, after that sequence normally I would have to stop a bit and slow things down otherwise I feel shaken and trembling because of that abundant flow of energy so you have to be very careful if you do the sequence make sure your bandas are uh, serving you if you're not jumping through if you're not doing the active ones you can just sit through use the blocks uh, stop if you need slow things down if you need um, yeah, and modify, yeah, lots of mod modification, you don't have to really bind the arms, you don't really have to go deep into the Kormasana, I've shown the modification in the beginning stages of the program, yeah, so sit yourself, work progressively, and keep the practice serving your level, serving your particular situation and circumstances. Alright, until the next video, namaste.